protein, protein, protein. As you can tell by the title and that brief and slightly weird intro there, we're talking about protein. And don't worry, I'm not going to make it boring or sciencey or anything like that. Today we're covering five protein items that I personally can't live without, or five protein products that I love and think that you should consider, if you will. I want it first. I just put some water here, which should dry out as the video goes on, and you'll have to excuse the mop on my head. I haven't enough to get out of the flat to get a haircut because I've been self isolating because I have and or had COVID. So obviously you'll isolate for 10 days. Yes, NHS, I have been staying in, even though you have been lovingly phoning me and or texting me multiple times a day to, uh, I don't know, remind me how to count to 10. I've been going to the gym for a very long time, since secondary school. And like most people, I struggled more with the nutrition side of things at first. So of course, that's one part of the reason why I want to do this video, but also because I've tried a lot of things, I've tried a lot of diets, I've tried a lot of different food items and meals. So I thought I'll make this video show you the, my kind of go-to protein items or things that you might not consider yourself. And hopefully you might learn a thing or two or find something that you love. Firstly though, before we do, if you do enjoy this video and don't want to miss anything like it again, then please hit that subscribe button and smash that bell, it would really mean a lot. Okay, so item number one, a good and versatile protein powder. And that's important. Actually, the important word there being versatile. Actually, I suppose good being the good or important word there too. There are a lot of bad ones out there. Still, I'll say still, because I do remember a time when even the best brands didn't sell very great protein powder. And don't get me wrong, some of them still are quite whack. A good versatile protein powder, although it sounds obvious, is a must. Now, my go-to or kind of staple apologies for the rustling, is My Protein's Chocolate Smooth. There you go, Chocolate Smooth. That goes great in protein porridge, Greek yogurt, which is actually a new thing that a friend recommended, but actually goes great. It's almost like a chocolate pudding mousse type thing. It goes great on, I have to look over there because I do it almost every day. It goes great on cereal, but for me personally, it'd be Wheatley Mix first, sometimes Shreddies, um, you can bake it into things like protein pancakes. I've seen some people do waffles as well. You don't have to just have a protein shake. A, a good bag of protein powder shouldn't just be something you're just chucking in a shaker and just downing, which by all means is, is great uh, in its own right, but something you can put in many other dishes or many other, I don't know, in, into different combinations of things is amazing. I probably have too many, but can you really have too many if they're good? So. Here are some others, which go really quickly. I have cinnamon danish, protein porridge with some raisins in there. Beautiful. Coffee caramel, mug cake, protein porridge, summer fruits, Greek yogurt with some extra fruit on top. Beautiful. Tisca petty flu. If anyone remembers those, get a mini pack lunch, petty flu. Cookies and cream. Small bag at the moment because I'm trying to limit myself because I keep buying too much every time I do my protein holder. Cookies and cream, Greek yogurt, Oh my goodness, you'd think it would be not much different from putting chocolate smooth in Greek oil, but trust me, it did. Actually, anything that is just a comfort food for like being thick and, and tasty, like, like porridge or uh, mug cake, this is great. And last but not least, coconut. Obviously, Greek yogurt, but I'm sure, I mean, it, just, it does just taste like coconut, so it could have most things, I'd imagine, but I've only ever really tried it in... Yogurt, I think, yeah. Spot number two, biltong. It's a form of dried, cured meat. Um, I think of it like, I'm gonna say like, so I don't get any hate, like beef jerky, but 10 times better. It's not got that same kind of almost, almost slimy, rubbery feeling that beef jerky has. Originating in South Africa, in South African countries such as, we'll put them up here, I'm not gonna try and say them all. Um, yeah, it originally was made with various types of meat, including beef, of course, which is how you'd find it um, as far as I know, for the most part over here. But my top two brands for these, which I tend to get sometimes on a weekly basis, not so much at the moment, but is Cohen and Kruger. Uh, so they're quite a, two of the well-known brands over here, but you can get them anywhere. Um, I think Lidl and Audi even do their own, their own version of this now. Let me give you some nutritional information here. So for a packet of Biltong, which they tend to be around 35 grams, for 40 grams for a whole bag, you're looking at around 100 calories. And of that, 
it's only about one gram of carbs, three grams of fat and 16 grams of protein. So as you can see, if you had like beef jerky and stuff before, very similar, but trust me, go try it for yourself, much nicer. You lose the slimy, rubbery aspect. It's still fairly dry, but you, it's, it's a dry cured meat, it's gonna be, but it tastes great. It's, it's, like, it's like eating dry steak. And who doesn't love steak? Unless you're vegan or, you know, vegetarian. <laughs> In spot number three, we have egg whites. Again, another one that, that kind of seems obvious. It's, you know, well known as one of those items that is low calorie, high in protein, but you can't do a list like this without including egg whites because for 18 calories per, per egg, you're looking at four grams of protein and that's obviously you're just doing the egg white. So for me, a typical eight, eight egg white omelette, almost a tongue twister there, with some mixed veg, which is something I would do quite a lot, especially if you're like doing like a cutting phase or trying to stay in a deficit, I think it's around 220, yeah, about 221 calories, 30.5 carbs, and yeah, one gram of fat with 32 grams of protein. That's great. And if you wanted to bulk that up with some extra carbs on the side, maybe um, add some of those yolks back in, um, or some meat even. I've done it before with ham inside the omelette as well. If you've got yourself a really decent meal there with a pack of protein. Oh, it's important to note as well that Part of the reason I include this is because nowadays egg whites is very accessible now by kind of the carton or the bottle, just as liquid egg whites. And we're getting that a lot more over here now. I've seen it in Sainsbury's, I've seen it in local um, health food stores. So that's a great option if you just want to grab the bottle, pour it in your frying pan, done. None of the, you know, cracking and splitting, cracking and splitting. You just pick it up, use it and go. And if you're someone who loves eggs and you know you, you'll use it, there'll be no wastage either. And it's just quick and convenient. So think about it. Item number four, Greek yogurt. Well, for me, technically low fat or fat free Greek style natural yogurt, but that's just because of personal preference. See, Greek yogurt or fat free natural yogurt, regardless of how you feel about whether actual Greek yogurt is better for other reasons, it doesn't really matter. They're both great in terms of protein. Per 100 grams, you're looking at, I think it's four. Let me double check. Oh no, seven grams of protein per 100 gram with the one I use. I use Brook Lea. Uh, that's the Audi brand of Greek style natural yogurt, just because that's my kind of closest supermarket. But also, even when I was in university and I shopped around, I found that Lidl and Audi were the best in terms of taste, nutritional information, and also value for money. Because I get a kilogram tub and that'll last me three or four breakfasts and you get great macros in that. Like I said, 100 grams of the stuff will yield about seven grams of protein. And I usually have two to 300 per meal. It really, really depends, really. Um, but yeah, and it's a great option because like I said, it, so many of those protein powders that I listed off go great. And although you're having the same kind of core uh, breakfast item in the morning, you can change up the flavors and toppings and it feels like every morning you're having something different. And it really is my go-to breakfast option for the most part. So Greek yogurt is something you really should consider because it's extra protein, pretty filling and low calorie, and it's a good base to add flavor to. Spot number five, low calorie, high protein ice cream. Okay, now for my final spot, I was stuck between ice cream, and protein bars. But I feel like I had to give it to ice cream because a protein bar is just too obvious of a choice. We've already got some obvious ones in there. And for me personally, they're just demolished far too quickly. What I have more often is a protein bar, fair enough, which technically would make more sense for this list. But I feel like in the long run, I could live without it and low calorie, high protein ice creams have come such a long way in recent years. Now, I have a massive sweet tooth and I love chocolate, which is why protein bars almost took the win for this one. But you can't ignore how far these ice creams have come in recent years over, uh, say the likes of a decent protein bar. I mean, we have Breyers now, we have Halo Top, um, I think is it Oppo, the other one's called, oh, have so I got any others on the list here, Jude's, and even the likes of Audi, I'm starting to realize how much I love Audi, actually. <laughs> They've, there's so many of them now, and it got the stats here again. You're talking 320 calories 
on average, let's just say 300 to 400 for a whole tub. And for that, you get roughly 13 grams of protein. Yeah, it's not by any means a ridiculous amount of protein, but if you've got a sweet tooth and you want something that's a decent size, like a whole tub of ice cream, you just can't ignore these ice creams. Talk about low calorie, high volume. Not, not ridiculously low, but it's a great option. And that's why it beat out protein bars. And I was also surprised to find the amount of people that still didn't even realize these things exist. And that, that's crazy because when I'm going in, the, in the, like, you know, the frozen aisle of a supermarket and I just crave ice cream in general, they're not that different from the good ice creams nowadays. The flavors are really good too. I'll see myself looking at Ben and Jerry's and go, oh, I could really smash the Netflix and chill one. But then I notice the low calorie ones, which also still taste great and have more protein, I'll go with that one. No, no bad feelings whatsoever towards not getting the high calorie ones because I do genuinely like these other ones. And of course, ice cream is a great dessert that also goes with a lot of different things. So again, like some of these other items, versatile, which is what I like in any food item really, but especially in my protein, because you want to try and get as much of it as you can, especially when you're going for those gains. So if you can have stuff that's versatile too, double win. So that is it, five protein items that I personally not live without, or that I think are just great and that you should check out. Click the video that should be on the screen now to uh, show you three ways, it's an old video of mine, three ways that you can change up your protein pancakes, three different recipes basically. And if you like the video, please smash that like button. Let me know what you think down below or let me know what five you would have picked for this list. But that is the video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, be creative and eat your protein.